Ark speaking. Today, we're covering the basics of how to obtain the Mario Kart Wii game files. That way we can modify and make our own custom textures to be used in the CTGP My stuff. Now if you only plan on modifying a few select files like Funky Flame, Daisy Mark, Toadette Blue Falcon, you can probably just ask anyone in a modding Discord server for the CS files, and they'll provide you with the necessary assets. But if you are even semi-serious about modifying stuff yourself, this video is for you. Also keep in mind I'm using a Wii, so to Moyo, if you want to make a Wii U version for this, be my guest. First, we're gonna need some stuff. You're gonna need a thumb drive at least 4GB, but preferably 8GB in size, the homebrew channel, which I'm going to assume you already have since the final objective is to use the CTGP My Stuff folder. And unless Bean does some more wizardry down the road, homebrew is a requirement when installing CTGP. Also following this logic, you should have a Wii and a copy of Mario Kart Wii. Do I have to mention that? Yeah, probably. You're also going to need to download CleanRip. This is the homebrew add-on that allows us to rip the game to the thumb drive. Then, once you get everything on your PC, you'll need to extract the ISO content into a normal file that you can actually use. I'll be using the popular emulator Dolphin. Yes, the same Dolphin emulator that allows you to play Wii games on your PC. Finally, you'll need a way to open the individual Wii files, so SCS, BRS, NIMS, etc. For this, you could use either Brawlbox, SCS Explorer, or if you're serious about not getting corrupted files, use WIM's WSZST Extractor. Links to all this crud in the video description. Now that probably all went over your head, but don't worry, we're going step by step as well. First, plug your thumb drive into your PC and quick format it to either FAT32 or NTFS. Keep in mind this will erase all the data on the thumb drives, so be sure to back those family pictures up beforehand. Once the format is complete, plug the USB drive into your Wii. If you're using an old Wii like mine, be sure to plug it into port 0, which is the USB port closest to the rubber feet. Now take your SD card and load up the CleanRip app by downloading using the link in the video description, then copying those files like shown into the app folder here. By the way, if you don't have this app folder already in your SD card, then you'll probably don't have homebrew. And I would refer to this video made by Troy on how to get CTGP. Once you copy the app, plug the SD card back into your Wii and load up homebrew. You should see the CleanRip app pop up, then which you'll want to load it, then follow the prompts. Also, I have to say that this is considered modding, so just to cover my rear, I have to say, do this at your own risk. Once you get to this screen, be sure to set chunk size to maximum, and new device push chunk should be set to off. Now, I just want to mention, my particular Wii has a bad disk drive. I can promise you I have used this application before to rip games, but I cannot any longer because my disk drive is going bad. That is a problem with my Wii, not with the application. So, it should work for you. But unfortunately, I can't actually get the footage, which is kind of annoying. I need to buy a new Wii. <laughs> Once it's done, take the thumb drive back into your PC. You should see a few ISO files, which means it's time to download Dolphin. If you know how to extract things, get the latest version. But for most of us, I would just get version 5.0, run the EXE. Then, when Dolphin launches, double-click on the main page and link the location of the ISO. So the thumb drive. Or if you actually want to play MK Wii on Dolphin, copy the ISO to your hard drive, then link Dolphin to your hard drive location instead. By the way, if you mess this up, go to Config, Paths, then Add Path. You should see the game pop up on the Dolphin window. So now right-click, go to Properties, then at the end, go to where it says File System. Right-click the disk looking icon, then click Extract All. Set the location of where you want all these files and hit Start. This will take a few minutes, so give it some time. And with that, you now have the actual game files for MKWii nice and neatly laid out. Just remember to always copy files from this location when you want to work on them. Unless of course you want to do this whole thing all over again. It's time to locate the files we want now. For this example, let's do Mario Mark. The prefix for Mark is MA Bike, and the prefix for Mario is MR. So go to the Race folder, then Cart folder, then look for the ma-bike-mr.scs. I've linked the thread post of all the prefix names and info, that way, if you want to do other characters and vehicles on your own, you'll be able to know where to look. 
Now make a copy of the ma-bike-mr.scs over to another folder as to not mess up our pristine database. Now let's try to open the copied file. For this example, we'll be using Brawlbox. So if you didn't download Brawlbox yet, do it now. And once you have it, open up the SCS file. Once inside the SCS file, go to the vehicle and character Brez files under the textures folder. Then right click and export Mario-All and Mario-64 for the character, and Bike Tire and Bike Body for the bike. These should be normal PNG images in the file explorer that you could take into your graphics editor of choice. So now it's time to have fun making your own custom textures. While you're working on that, you may be curious what the underscore dash 2 and underscore dash 4 SCS files are. These are the files used for multiplayer. Underscore 2 for 2 players and underscore 4 for 3 to 4 players. Mario Kart Wii's file system has a lot of these almost redundant feeling files. So if you want the textures to work in local multiplayer, be sure to replace these as well. Also, if you're curious, in our example, Mario Dash All is the main texture that you'll be seeing for your own character. But the Mario Dash 64 is the texture that's used when the vehicle combination is a little further away and the Wii lowers the polygons to save on resources. So be sure to edit both images. Once you finish making your own textures, it's as simple as replacing the copy SCS textures with yours, saving the SCS, then loading them up into CTGP or my stuff, and make sure that the prefix name is correct. No spaces, no extra numbers, none of that. Now I want to mention this entire process is going to be a little complicated in the beginning, so if you're struggling with any problems, feel free to join the Discord server, to which myself, or one of the helpful assistants can help fix your problem in real time. Or if you don't mind waiting a bit, comment. And in the time it takes for me to get back to you, why don't you like and subscribe? It helps me help you. It's a win-win for everyone. Thanks for watching, and happy modding.